Kevin Smith goes full on meta, bringing his real life into film and turning his breakout sensation into a trilogy. <laughs> I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is my review of Clerks 3. Um, I'm a blind film critic. I watch films with audio description, and this has audio description if you rent it. Uh, I don't know that it's, it is anywhere, or that it will be anywhere, but uh, I rented this off of iTunes. I do like Kevin Smith enough that I don't care that he gets my money, so um, this didn't, you know, whatever. Um, and the last film that he did, Jane Silent Bob Reboot, uh, was on Amazon, but that didn't have a distributor? So, I don't know, I don't know when or if Clerks 3 will end up anywhere. I think Clerks 3, um, I do believe that was Lionsgate. So, uh, I don't know where Lionsgate shit goes anymore, but I don't have high hopes, because that's Stars. So this is probably just gonna go to stars. And uh usually when I when I see certain studios and stuff and I'm like, ah, that's with that studio, so it's this is probably gonna go here and I'm <sighs> not gonna get it with audio description because stars I can, I won't give me audio description. Anyway, so yeah, I did it, pulled the trigger. Um audio description here is is uh the least memorable thing about this film, honestly. Um, I mean, it, it tries. It feels like it was done by somebody who hadn't really done a lot of audio description before. Um, and they were just kind of, uh, <laughs> it kind of feels like the clerks of audio description. Like we're, like we're getting started on audio description, which is kind of what clerks was. Like it's Kevin Smith getting started on clerks. So oddly enough, the fact that it feels um, sort of on the lower end of, of audio description experiences for me. I can't even really explain how. It's just, um, there are more, uh, better descriptive audio descriptions. Uh, this one is more like it's describing a sitcom and it has, you know, uh, it just pops in every once in a while. It's like, it's expecting like a lot of dialogue, so it really underscribes under because it doesn't have a lot of time to come in. But it has a little bit more time to speak than it thinks it does. Because um, Clerks 3 is trying to be this meditative experience because Kevin Smith, if you don't know, uh, had a heart attack a little while ago um, and survived it. He was given a Widowmaker heart attack. <laughs> which they talk about quite bluntly in this film and exactly what it is and what the survival ratio is, which uh, he, um, Kevin Smith has, instead of putting it into Silent Bob and expecting Silent Bob to talk, they put it into Randall, uh, one of the two clerks, and they give him the uh, experience of going through this. And he has the heart attack. He has the Widowmaker and uh has to go through the surgery and uh Dante is there and Jay and Silent Bob and uh just the whole gang and by the way just an ass ton of cameos are in this film just a, a lot of cameos you're gonna have to look it up because they're not all explained to you but Kevin Smith is beloved in Hollywood, um, this is one of those times where you can see how well people like, because people showed up, there's an audition sequence, uh, or people who audition for the, the film within a film, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, um, there's some talent there that, uh, that agreed to pop in and be like, hey, uh, yeah, I'll let me somebody, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty long list of people, um, and a pretty, actually, <laughs> interesting list of people, too, um, considering who they got. Like, I never, I didn't really think I'd see Freddie Prince Jr. in Clerks 3, <laughs> but he's there <laughs> with Sarah Michelle Gellar. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was an interesting sort of, uh, list of people, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, the, it, it just evolves. It, it takes the original Clerks cast, and what they decide to do is uh, Randall wakes up 
and uh, you know his uh, he's got a new outlook on life he's like what have I been doing with my life and he wants to make a movie so basically he makes clerks so the movie turns super meta, comes full circle, and since the movie started out as Clerks, <laughs> he ends up basically making Clerks, because in his world, he doesn't know that Clerks started out. So it's this really weird thing. It's kind of cool what Kevin Smith did to it. I like Kevin Smith. Uh, I think he's a good writer and a good director, and he's okay as an actor. Um, I, you know, I've never, he's never stretched himself. You know, if, if somebody told me Kevin Smith was going to do some Shakespeare in the park, I'd be concerned. But Kevin knows, he knows where he's fine. You know, he knows exactly where to put himself as an actor. And most of the time he's playing a silent character, which is why we need the audio description, because Silent Bob doesn't speak. Silent Bob speaks with hand gestures, which are not even actual... He doesn't, he didn't have, even actually learn sign language. He just has re facial reactions and, and, uh, hand gestures. And that's kind of one of the things I felt like I was missing a little bit was the Silent Bob experience, which is a, some, something else I've kind of missed with the Jane Silent Bob reboot. It's like, you really got to pay attention to what he's doing to be able to communicate it because that's a character that doesn't speak. So, um, yeah, uh, Okay, so here's the here's the de here's the deal. I enjoy um, a, l a lot of Kevin Smith stuff, not all of his stuff. Uh, Askew Universe is for me like there's some stuff where I can go, yeah, that was fine, uh, and then there's some stuff where I'm like, I don't know. I mean, for me, um, I don't know that he's been getting better as a director the past couple years. Uh, I think he might actually be slipping. Um, Jay and Silent Bob reboot for me wasn't great. And uh, it was just taking two characters who were over the hill and kind of commenting on how over the hill they are. Um, and Clerks 3 does that a little bit, but it instead of putting it on the two characters who are entertaining, it puts it on Randall and Dante, who are not entertaining and not good actors. Um, those two men... Uh, they don't really do anything other than uh, Kevin Smith movies. So they don't really have dramatic range, and this film has some heavy stuff in it, uh, and it just doesn't work. Um, when you give this kind of material to those actors, uh, it, doesn't, it, it ended up not paying off. Um, which is a shame because I think what Kevin Smith wrote here is a personal film that could work, um, in many ways, but it just doesn't because he ended up casting the same two guys from the same film that was just, I mean, if you've seen Clerks, you know, it was kind of shot almost like security cam footage. Um, it was this black and white indie film that, uh, you know, was one of those first breakout Sundance smash hits and jump-started his career, and he just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but he did it low budget with these guys, and the guys never broke out. They never went anywhere. They never became anything. They never did anything. Um... <clears throat> So they haven't grown, they haven't learned. Uh, Jason Mewes has actually been in, like, a few other things other than Kevin Smith movies. So he has maybe slightly more range. But as, as a whole, this Clerks group, uh, they're not good actors. And it's really obvious because good actors come into this film. Like, they made the mistake in Clerks 2 of adding Rosario Dawson to, like, the main cast of Clerks. So she's in quite a bit of Clerks 3, and she is a good actress. So every time she's on scene, she's delivering dialogue the way dialogue should be delivered, and the other guys are delivering dialogue as if it's not dialogue. Like, Kevin didn't write them anything, and they just are sort of talking, like, the way I am now. Like, 
Like, it's obvious that Rosario is acting, and the other guys are just kind of like, I don't know, what are we supposed to do? I guess we can... This is what I want to do. It's just... It's very wooden. Um, and uh, they're just not great actors. Um, I... I hate saying that because I, I think I love the script. I think I love the idea, the intention. I love the creativeness of it. I love what Smith was trying to do here. But at the end of the thing, when, you know, when you're trying to land the plane, you can't, you know, I, Pilot's great. You know, he's got a great resume. Uh, I flew with him before. Good pilot, solid pilot. Uh he looks, he looks fine, everything's checking out, but, uh, oh, he forgot to put the landing gear down, <laughs> you know, you're still, that's what you're gonna remember, <laughs> you know, you're gonna be like, wow, that was a great flight, oh, shit, he didn't put the landing gear down, or, <laughs> um, and that's all I'm gonna remember from this film, at the end of the day, was the acting, and the acting is, n is, is actually quite terrible, um, I actually think I have seen worse this year because I've seen movies like Hot Take where I don't even know who those people were, but they should never try acting ever again. At least these guys have been on camera before. I'm pretty certain Hot Take was cast with some guy standing on the street being like, who wants to be in a movie? Um, so yeah, uh, this is, this is pretty close though. Um, to the worst acting I've, I've had this year from these, uh, from Dante, Randall, uh, and, and the gang. So, uh, and if it's even, it's made even worse by the fact that this film actually has an emotionally resonant ending to it. Like, it actually does not end on like a, yay, I'm Kevin Smith and I'm funny ending. <laughs> it ends on a, I'm Kevin Smith and I almost died. And this is going to remind you of that. <laughs> so, um... That coupled with uh, mediocre audio description. Um, uh, the kind of cool thing, I will say, everything cool about this film <laughs> rests on Kevin Smith. So at the end of the film, in the credits, um, he actually just starts talking to the audience during the credits. Like, he thanks people uh, for watching the film and uh, for his whole ride. And it's like it's his opportunity to, to talk and, and be and talk about how personal this film was to him, and I felt so bad, because at that point, I already knew. You know, I knew where I was going to go with this film, and he's and he's thanking me for watching <laughs> the film, and I'm just like, oh, Kevin. Kevin, can your next film please be with talent again? Where's Dogma? You know, where is Red State? Where are these films that you used to do with actual actors uh, in lead roles, not in cameos? But actual actors in lead roles, I want to see Kevin Smith come in and actually show his true potential as a writer-director where he is not in the film and none of the people who are in Clerks as lead, none of these Clerks people are in the film. Just do a regular film. I love Red State. I think it's so underrated. Um, I love Dogma. I think that's my favorite Kevin Smith film. And those films have actual actors in them. They are centered around actors <laughs> playing roles so i need more of that in my life from kevin smith but this sadly uh is the worst of the three clerks because when when these guys are required to be funny it's not as painful as when it's when it requires them to be dramatic these guys have no dramatic depth to them so, unfortunately, Clerks 3 takes a serious turn, uh, which is fine. It should be fine. It should have been fine. Um, the film is written fine. I have no problem with the script. I have a problem just with the fact that he gave it to these guys. So, unfortunately, I'm going to give Clerks 3 a C-. minus. Um, it's uh, on the lower end of of my Kevin Smith films. It's kind of down there with Jersey Girl. Um, yeah, you probably forgot about that. Um, I think everybody tries to forget about that. So, uh, 
let me know what you think in the comments. I think I, I don't know what I just have, I don't know what I did to a skew universe. Uh, and there's like at least a, I think the way Kevin Smith operates, there's at least like a five to 10% chance that he will actually see this video. And dude, I love you, but acting, acting is a thing. It's a choice. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm blind, so, I mean, when people don't vocally emote either and everything is just uh, deadpanned, uh, it, it, it's even more obvious to me. So, um, and subscribe to my channel so we can continue to talk about films with audio description and, and uh, films from my perspective and remind Hollywood that blind people watch movies too and they should keep giving audio description to films. Because uh, I end up reviewing films that don't have audio description and are unintelligible. So, that's it. Uh, I will... Uh, yeah, I have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. I gotta do the hype. Uh, at, at Twitter, MacMovieGuy.com. Instagram, at MacMovieGuy.com. No. Both of those, just at MacMovieGuy. I'm fucking this up. Audio description project, adp.acb.org. Uh, we'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And the adna.org. We'll let you know... Uh, which uh, films and television shows of yours and who's working on the audio description for them. That's it. I will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side.